Good morning. It's Sunday morning. We wanted to feel as we live streamed back at church that we were together again in a full house. And we know we're together in spirit, but I've been missing you so much. I wanted to show you a little something we've been up to. Take a look at this. We're glad to have you all here today. We missed you so much. It was a bit of an effort of the heart to make sure you were all back in this space. And we did our best to make sure you were even here worshiping in almost your favorite spot to sit on a Sunday morning. So welcome to worship as you sit in the comfort of your home, but know that you are here together in heart and mind and spirit. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning. Therefore, I urge you, my brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Don't be conformed to the pattern of the world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to discern what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable, what is perfect. Now I say this with all the grace that's been given to me, I say it to each of you. Don't think on yourself more highly than you ought. Think of yourself with sober reflection, in accordance with the faith that God has given to each of us. For just as each one of us has a body with many members, and those members don't all have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members of one another. Just as we have one body with many members, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually we are members of one another. We all have different gifts. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's leading, then lead diligently. And if it's showing mercy, then do it cheerfully. So it sounds like we've been having some sound issues. I'm hoping that it's being resolved. We, we really wanted you to hear the words of that backpack blessing as we embark on the fall season, whether, whether it is home learning and learning online this summer or this fall, or whether it's, it's going to school that we, we know parents and teachers are doing their best to help their children learn. And we pack our backpacks and have our supplies and we do, um, 
we do what we can. So, so blessings on all of our, our teachers and our students and our parents and all these new ways that we're, 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 we're teaching our children this year and as our, our kids, all of you kids, go off to school this fall. I invite you now to a reflection. Um, you heard those words from Linnea, told by Linnea Good this morning. When we look at that, um, that passage from Romans, it looks like the church at Rome really had a lot to learn about unity because Paul goes to all these great lengths to um, establish that all people, regardless of their background, will be accepted by God. And so Paul needed this metaphor to help overcome whatever conflict or divisiveness there was in the church at Rome at that time. And he wanted somehow to express this this type of unity of hope for the church, hope for Christ's church. So I wonder what made Paul think of such a metaphor, a body metaphor. Maybe it was his awareness that the body is fragile especially in that first century context. Maybe he woke up one day grateful that he had made it as far as he had, you know, that he'd survived that high infant mortality, high child mortality rate of that day. Maybe he was grateful that he got to travel in open air instead of having to work in those crowded cities that were often often a breeding ground for disease. Maybe he was grateful for wise healers and doctors when he needed something. The body is a fragile thing. And don't we know that today with our own aches and pains and sudden changes in our health and our well-being? So maybe Paul thought that metaphor of the body was really fitting. To be grateful for it. To take better care of it. We should realize that all parts need one another and need to work together to survive and thrive in often a hostile environment. Whatever it was that made him think of it, the body really is that perfect metaphor for church unity. It's better than a family or a team even, we could say. Because you can take a break from being a member of a team. You can go on vacation without your family. But you can never take a break from the parts of your body. When Paul says, you are the body of Christ, he doesn't mean that the church literally is Christ's body in every way. So as to be without error or flaw. He doesn't mean that. But he means that the church is a body that belongs to Christ. The church is a body that gives Christ a face in the world. And how important that is today. I want so very much for you to remember that today. I know it's hard when we aren't together. When we're, we're apart, we're not worshiping in the same space on a Sunday morning. And I, I really do, as I said, I miss you all so much in this space that we put all these photos here this morning. But how important it is, ever so more important, we remember today our role, our part, our place, and how much, how very, very much we need each other and how much the world needs us as part of this body of Christ. That indeed we are the face of Christ in the world. It becomes really uh, a process You know, it's about living out our identity. Not as just self-contained bodies here and there, but as members of something, as part of something bigger than ourselves. And we grow in that understanding and that, that identity, and we grow in empathy for other members of Christ's body. When another member of the body suffers, we feel it too. And we offer... Um, encouragement. We offer support. When all members of the group relate to one another in this way, the results are a healthier body, right? 
Do you remember that childhood verse where it goes, I am the church, I am the steeple, and we open the doors and we see all the people? Try that. Do you remember that verse? I am the church, I am the steeple, or here is the church. That's how it goes. Here is the church, here is the steeple. We open the doors and we see all the people. Right now, there aren't people physically present in the church for us to see. But we're always connected, and we always, always, always remain part of Christ's body. And so we all need to remember that the part that fits us best, whatever it is, whatever part it is of the body that fits us best, to live that part, whatever it might be. So that when we do, here is the church, here is the steeple, we open the doors, and right now the people aren't here. And let's remember, though, that that isn't a sad, unfortunate reality. We miss each other deeply, but it's because we are being the body of Christ in the world. We are being the church in the world. And that is ever so much more important. So I give thanks for you all today that we continue to be the church in the world and we are part of Christ's body near and far, um, close at heart, doing our, our part here together. I wanted to share a video with you now. It's a reminder of, of just how much we do as a community of faith to support one another, care for one another, love each other, serve our church, serve the world, um, offer whatever it is we can in each of our different ways. And so watch this video, enjoy it, and maybe it'll spark your attention of what your plans are to continue being the body of Christ together. Have a watch. Let's move now into our time of prayer. 
if you have any prayers you would like to name this morning, please type them into the comments. Uh, prayers of concern, prayers of thanks, prayers for yourself or someone you know or a situation in the world. Please share them so we can lift them in prayer together. My hope today is that you will feel connected and that you will feel reconnected to your church. That even though we aren't together physically, we are still so much, so greatly the church together. And we're doing that in heart and spirit and in everything we do. And that we continue to be Northminster United Church. In the year to come, whether it's in serving others, or maybe your call is to speaking love, or to voicing protest against an injustice, or it's reaching out to show your care to people um, who's alone or in need, or maybe your gift is writing a check to make more ministry and more possibilities happen. Whatever it is our call to be, to be loving, to be caring, to be a voice, to be generous, whatever it is, our role is as the body of Christ. We continue to be Northminster United Church. And those things will happen still in our coffee group online, whether our committees meet on Zoom or when the book club meets in someone's backyard or the men's group gathers virtually whether it's youth group and kid zone happening on Zoom, whether we gather in a yard or a park, whether we make a phone call or we deliver a newsletter or we hold people in prayer or we knit prayer shawls, there are so many ways that we all continue to serve um, our church and as part of Christ's body. When we worship with Facebook or YouTube or we're using an at-home worship resource, we ask God to bless us in this time. We ask God to bless us in all we do as we be the church together this year. I'll offer continued words of prayer. Maybe you can do the actions with me as we name them in our prayer this morning. Loving God, here are our hands. Use them to build and serve and create this year. Loving God, here are our voices. We commit to speak words of life and love. Loving God, here are our minds. Help us in our learning and our questions and our praying together. Loving God, guide our feet. If you're sitting, you'll be able to reach your feet easier than I can. Guide our feet. Help us to find ways to walk the paths you set before us. Help us notice those who walk alone. And loving God, here are our hearts. What do you want us to love today? Here are our whole lives, God. May we stay tuned toward you to reflect your light each day as we do the work you give us. May your amazing ways be visible through each and every one of us. Let your light shine as we make this journey with you. Amen. For our prayers this morning... Tracy has named a prayer for Rachel and Andrew as they begin their married life together. I hope you got to see their, their marriage yesterday. It's on Facebook and our YouTube account if you'd like to, to watch that that was held here yesterday. Also prayers today for Brad's dad, Ormond, who's in hospital right now. We hold him in prayer. I understand it's Lloyd Vincent's birthday today. Happy birthday, Lloyd. And Shauna May and Lyndon Jassick, a family in our church with their little boy Harrison, they welcomed another new baby on Friday, baby Rowan. And so we welcome their new addition to our church family as well. Another prayer this morning from Jan, praying for all those impacted by the fires and the devastation as the result of them. 
and from Carolyn that may those of us with anxiety due to being immune compromised and with COVID find some peace with the coming spread of smoke from the fires in the States. Thank you for your prayers this morning. Join me now as we gather all of our prayers spoken and prayers held in silence as we say together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We move now into our time of offering. We extend again our deepest gratitude to all of your ways you continue to make an offering when weekly or monthly or when you can to supporting the work of this body of Christ here that we call Northminster United Church. So thank you for your continued offerings um, to Northminster. Let us pause in prayer and bless all the gifts of our lives. As we pray to you, God, we give thanks that we do not stand alone, that we are interconnected. Bless these gifts, the gifts of, of money, of, of skill, of, of our talents, of our time, of our prayers. Bless all of these gifts, helping us to draw the circle wider, encouraging us to discover Jesus in the face of others, and challenging us to act out of love and hope in the year to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A few announcements, and it's obviously September because there's more than there was to share in the summer. We are starting Zoom coffee on Sundays after church from 11.30 until 12. And if you haven't got the Zoom link for that, text me or email me right away. You've got my info and I will forward you the link so you can still participate today if you haven't requested it. Otherwise, you can get it from the office during the week and that link will stay good through right through the fall until the end of the year. So you can use the same Zoom link every Sunday to have coffee at 11.30. Our Kids Zone program is resuming next week. It will be a blend of Zoom about once a month and some other online resources we're creating with other congregations in Calgary. But you can gather with Coach Tracy next Sunday for a, um, a, a Zoom time together. And again, get that link from the office to participate. Rachel and Andrew's wedding was yesterday. Again, watch that on our Facebook and YouTube channels. And the Mission Outreach Committee invites you to a bottle and food drive next Saturday morning here at the church from 9 till 1. Drop off your donations here, and there'll be people here to help you em empty your trunk with your do from your donations. Supper Church is resuming again, 6 p.m. on the 24th. Watch for more details. I understand Craig is making chicken parmesan as part of Supper Church that night. And looking to October, we're going to plan an opportunity to be together outside with Campfire Church. Campfire Church will be on October 3rd, and it will be outside at Shouldice Park. So we'll watch for more details. It will be late afternoon, so hopefully weather permitting. But we'll dress warm, bundle warm, and be together for an outside church service on that Saturday. With no other announcements... Thank you again for being here. Thank you for accommodating us with our few um, little hiccups we might have had. And hopefully you were still able to participate fully and hear most of the service. And thanks to our volunteers who are here um, helping make this possible that we'll be able to come from Northminster Live to you every week. Our blessing. Go into the world. 
pray without ceasing, share God's love in word and action every day because God is powerful through you. Amen. As we close our time of worship this morning, Sarah will lead us in singing together, Walk With Me. Bye for now. Cause we don't